How's it going everybody? AZ Plyo 21 back again with another video here in our UFC save in WMMA5. And today we have for you UFC on ABC Shevchenko versus Chukagian 2. Now, of course, previous meeting Chukagian Shevchenko did not end well for Caitlin Chukagian, but she's on a little bit of a roll after beating Modafferi and Murphy, earning herself another title shot at Shevchenko. Shevchenko is ready to go. She's obviously been defending her title uh, against Joanne Calderwood. That was on the McGregor versus Gaethje card. So now a little bit uh, more of a popular fighter is Shevchenko, mid-level national here in America. This one is going to be in New Jersey, which is Chukagian's home state. You can see the rest of the main card there. Uh, featured fighters include Cody Garbrandt, Tiago Santos, Frank Mir returning against Ben Rothwell, Luke Rockhold, and Matt Brown also on the card. So a pretty stacked card for you here in this one. All of our uh, emails are taken care of. All of our news is taken care of. So let's go ahead and get right into the action. I have a lot of fight cards that are actually going down today, including this Invicta card. We are going to be, uh, after this title fight at Adam Weight, we are going to be uh, cutting off the Adam Weight division and basically just um, sending you know everybody else into the straw weight division. It looks like Callie Robbins actually missed weight. That sucks for her. Oh well. Either way, let's go ahead and get on into the fight card. Shevchenko versus Chukagian 2. And did I put it on all the providers? Yes, I did. Let's go ahead and get started. Here in New Jersey for this fight card, let's go ahead and get things started, of course, with the prelims. Austin lights out Lingo, taking on Spike, the Alpha Ginger Carlisle. Love that name. 9-1 and one is uh, Spike. Austin Lingo is 7-1. and one. In the featherweight division and Austin Lingo takes it via TKO a fantastic fight love to see that and he'd like to fight Yusuf Rysoff next in the flyweight division Terrence Mitchell taking on Makoto Takahashi 10 1 and 1 is Takahashi taking on the 11 and 2 Terrence Mitchell and Takahashi at only 20 years of age gets the win via knockout in round number two his first UFC fight of course and having a good time there. And he's happy that he won his UFC debut. Shanna Young taking on J.J. Aldrich. In the flyweight division, J.J. Aldrich 8-4. and four. Shanna Young is 7-3. and three. And Shanna Young, actually the underdog here, gets the victory. Defeating Aldrich via TKO in round number 3 with one second to go. Yikes. Getting a right at the last second, literally. And then she debuts in the UFC with a win. Bobby Green taking on Tiago Moises now in the lightweight division. Moises 12 and 4. Bobby Green, a veteran at 24, 10, and 1. And Moises gets the win via split decision. And he would like to fight Nasrat Hakparast in his next fight. The James Krause taking on Takashi Sato. Into the welterweight division. 15 and 3 is Takashi Sato. James Krause is 27 and 8. Basically a pick them between the two of them. And Takashi Sato gets the win via knockout in round number two. Michael Trezano taking on Herbert Burns now. I believe in the featherweight division. Brother of Gilbert Burns. Has he been up to anything? I think he's coming off a win. Or yeah, but this is his first fight of the save. And then Michael Trezano. I think he's 0-1 in the UFC. Coming off a loss to Grant Dawson. And Michael Trezano. Gets the win over Herbert Burns in round number two. Herbert Burns is actually coming off a win uh, pretty recently in real life as well. He says he has respect for Burns. You love to see that. Band and weight division now as Tim Elliott faces off against Hunter Azur. Elliott 15, 10, and 1, taking on Hunter Azur, who is 8 and 0. Oh. And Hunter actually fighting out of the MMA lab. That's where I, I mean, I don't train, but that's where I go to do my quote unquote training. And Tim Elliott gets the win via split decision, handing Hunter his first loss of his career. He did not like being in that fight. It was a poor rated fight. All right, the Leech taking on Themba Gorimbo out of Zimbabwe. A pick em between the two of these guys, both six foot tall. And Themba Gorimbo debuting with a TKO victory. You love to see that. And he's very happy to have 
won in his UFC debut. All right, Cynthia Calvillo, who is basically the number two ranked uh, flyweight in the world now, taking on Marina Rodriguez. These uh, guys, I think, drew in their first fight, yeah, in December 2019. Calvillo's coming off a loss, and Marina Rodriguez, this is her first fight of the save. She's the favorite over Calvillo, and she actually gets the win via TKO in round number one. So Rodriguez still undefeated at 13-0-2. As we head into our last prelim, Carolina Ko Kowalkovic taking on Jin Yu Frey. 10 and 4 is Jin Yu Frey. Kowalkovic is 12 and 7. Kowalkovic coming off a loss. And Jin Yu Frey is coming off a win over Mizuki Inoue. And Jin Yu Frey does get the win via TKO in round number one over Kowalkovic, who's now 12 and 8 and on quite a losing streak. And she actually retires immediately after. We'll see if we can talk her out of it. Kovalkovich, I think she has a little bit of popularity under her name, so it'd be nice to keep her around. As we head on to the main card, the immortal Matt Brown taking on Sean Brady. 13-0 is Sean Brady. Matt Brown, 22-17, and 17, 39 years of age, a big favorite here. As he gets the win, 45 seconds into round number one. Matt Brown might retire here, coming off a loss to Albert Tumanoff. He could retire here. 23 and 17 big win over a nice prospect in Sean Brady Let's see what Matt Brown says and he's just happy to have won love to see it the immortal Matt Brown Next fight on the main card Luke Rockhold making his debut or not his debut He's already debuted at light heavyweight against Corey overtime Anderson Corey Anderson is coming off a loss to Vulcan Ozdemir Meanwhile Luke Rockhold is coming off that loss to Jan Blahovich. Luke Rockhold, a big favorite here, and he gets the win via TKO in round number one. Interesting. So Rockhold might be a ranked heavyweight come Monday, or come tomorrow, and he would like to fight Alan Baudo. Interesting call out. Seems a winnable fight for him. Frank Mir, back in the UFC at 41 years of age. This could be his final fight. This could be both of these guys' final fight, to be honest. Coming off a loss to Quentin Jackson in uh, Bellator. Ben Rothwell, this is his second fight. Or no, not his second fight back. He's been around. But he's back coming off a loss to Travis Brown. Uh, both these guys, not really the best in their division, but it's kind of just a nice fight to put on. Ben Rothwell, slight advantage. And Frank Mir gets the win via TKO over Ben Rothwell in round number two. And he doesn't hang him up. Frank Mir still going at it at 41 years of age. All right, Misha Serkinov now taking on Tiago Santos. I Is this the second meeting between the two of them? No, this is a fresh meeting. Santos coming off a loss to Shogun Hua. Meanwhile, Misha Serkinov coming off a win over OSP. Serkinov is favored here, and he gets the win via Darsh Choke in round number one. And he was very happy that he was able to get that choke in. And I think he was ranked number eight, so he might be a little higher in the rankings. I mean, hey, Serkinov climbing his way through the rankings. Co-main event of the evening, Cody No Love Garbrandt taking on Ricky Simone in the Bantamweight division. Simone coming off two straight wins over Yadong Song and Frankie Edgar, now ranked number 12 in the UFC, taking on Cody Garbrandt, who is coming off a loss to John Dodson. And Ricky Simone is favored, and he gets the win via knockout in rounds number one. That's a big name to have on your on your resume for Ricky Simone. And now our main event of the evening for the UFC Flyweight Championship of the World, and Shukagian is favored. Why is that? Huh. Okay, our main event of the evening for the UFC Flyweight Championship of the World. Let's get going. And Shevchenko's the underdog. Let's see what happens. Well, hold on, let me stop the timer. Because Shukagian's on a two-fight winning streak, and she won via TKO and knockout. That probably could be a reason why. 
Because, yeah, her skills aren't necessarily anything amazing. So why she's the favorite, I have no idea. But let's get it going. <sighs> Catches Chukagan with a crunching hook. Chukagan goes down. Shevchenko pounding away. Heavy shots. Oh, wow. She didn't finish her off there. Shevchenko, submission attempts, no good. Referee stands them back up. Nice left hook to the ribs. So Shevchenko is dominating early on. As round one comes to a close. Shevchenko nearly finished her there. Shukagian landing a left hand. Left hook to the body of Shukagian. Shukagian, remember, in her home state. Two fighters engage. Nothing significant. It was it was not of significance. Shukagan is limping a little bit. Halfway through round number two. It could be a long night for her. Beauty of a straight left from Shevchenko. Shukagan with a counter left. Crunching left hook. Right kick to the ribs. Shevchenko char about to start slowing down here. Hard low kick to the legs of Chukagian as round two ends. Shevchenko apparently took it 10-8. Yikes. Spin kick to the ribs. Chukagian is limping. Left cross. Obvious limp for Chukagian. Great left hook for Chevchenko. Right hook to the side of the body. Hits the left cross. Good left hook. Into the thigh area. Chukagin is being totally outstruck. Chukagin ba barely able to walk, apparently. Going with a low kick. Under a minute left to go. And Chukagin is absolutely limping. Beautiful left uppercut. She's down. Chukagin falls to the floor. Shevchenko raining down punches. And Dan Mergliata has stopped the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Mergliata has called a stop to this contest at 4 minutes, 59 seconds of round number 3. Declaring your winner by TKO and still the undisputed UFC flyweight champion of the world Valentina the bullet Shevchenko you love to see it dominance from Shevchenko basically the entire fight but Chukagian put in a good fight and she earned this title shot so we're gonna have to see what's next for Shevchenko just what is next attendance of around 3,000 in New Jersey gate of about 600 K which is good we might actually make a pro uh, maybe might make a profit popularity increases in a lot of places except for uh, Britain and Australia they didn't like this card for some reason all right let's see any fantastic fights yes the lingo versus Carlisle fight love to see it now performance bonuses Matt Brown's going to get one. And Rockhold for the time being. Ooh. Anything else end earlier? Uh, no. Those are good. So a nice profit of about a million dollars. Like to see that. Luke Rockhold's on a bit of a big contract. We're probably going to have to renegotiate that with him in a little bit. If Luke Rockhold doesn't make that much, we're probably another 400k in the bank right there. 
You need to make a little bit of money back, you know, piece by piece, because that Connor pay per view, that was $10 million negative. And it was all because of him, basically. So we will go ahead and update our rankings, take a look at our emails, and then sign off. And I'm probably going to go live on Twitch in a little bit to uh, do some, some Pride FC. I know some people like that save, and I'm a big fan of it too, and I enjoy bringing it for everybody who does like it, so why not? Remember, there's a lot of fight nights, or a lot of fight cards that were going on. <sighs> you guys probably didn't want to, you know, look at Damon Jackson all that much anyways. I'm very excited for the next month that I can book, because I think... I'm going to do two pay-per-views. And the reason for that is Conor McGregor is ready to be booked. And I'm thinking about doing him and Tony either in Ireland or it should just be in Nevada, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'd probably just do it in Nevada. Him versus Tony is a Nevada fight for sure. Because if we look at what we got here, these are all the fights that still need to be booked up. But Blades is the number one contender in the heavyweight division. Reyes is number one in the light heavyweight division. That's already booked up. Whitaker's fighting Adesanya. GSP is fighting uh, Kamaru Usman. That's in Quebec. That's the most recent one that we just booked. Tony is the number one contender for Connor's lightweight championship because Habib is out for a good six months. And then after Tony, it's going to be the Yaquinta versus Gillespie winner. Um, Zabit is the number one contender for the featherweight title that um, Max just re-won. Uh, Jan is the number one contender for the Bantamweight title once um, Marlon Moraes is good, is good to go again. Demetrius Johnson, who we have back, is currently going to fly, is going to fight for the flyweight uh, title. And then right after that is Hussie De Silva. He's already lined up. We have a tournament for the women's featherweight division going on. And the winner of that little tournament is going to be the number one contender for the featherweight championship. Women's bantamweight, I think, is going to be the Aldana. Oh, I really don't know. Well, we'll have to check on that. But for right now, Chukagian, no longer the contender. We'll have to figure something out for that. All right. Let's go ahead and update our rankings here. Uh, no movement other than at the bottom. Frank Mir is in at number 25 after beating Rothwell, who was out of the rankings. At light heavyweight, Sirkinov is up to number three. Interesting. After beating Santos. So he's beaten Kroot, beating OSP, and beaten Santos. I think one more win and maybe Sirkinov gets a title shot. Vulcan's fighting Jan. Gustafson is fighting Shogun. I 
I mean, if Sh if Shogun wins, that's a title shot for him right there. To share Santos and Gustafson, that would be a f that would be a instant title fight for Shogun. Gustafson would probably need one more win, probably over a guy like Serkinov. Yeah, there we go. That's our little our little plan. Rockhold debuts at number nine at light heavyweight. Nice. After getting a big win over Corey Anderson, uh, these guys move up. Tiago Santos down to number fourteen. Anderson down to seventeen, and then everyone else moves down. Middleweight, there is no movement. Welterweight, Takashi Sato has debuted at number 23 after getting a win over James Krause. Uh, lightweight, there is no movement. Featherweight, there is no movement. Bantamweight, Ricky Simone is now number 4. Cody Garbrandt moves all the way down to number 23. Yikes. Oh, jeez. Cody Garbrandt in desperate need of a win now. Flyweight, there is no movement. Women's featherweight, no movement. Women's bantamweight, no movement. At flyweight, Chukagian goes down to number five. Uh, Andrea Lee. I mean... Fighting Liz Carmouche. Who already lost to Shevchenko. I mean, Jillian Robertson... Who's I fighting? Calderwood? Because I don't want Barbara to fight for the title just yet, you know? Because she still needs to develop. She really does. Uh, maybe Robertson versus the uh, Carmouche Lee winner? When is that fight happening? In January. We're in December. Or I could just do Lee if she wins. But she's already lost Lauren Murphy and Calderwood within the last year, too. Went over Liz Carmouche, Jillian Robertson, Montana Lobos, and Alexis Davis. Hmm. But she has that loss to Barbara. I feel like Lee, maybe. I don't really know, to be honest. Because she's off. She'd be off two wins, but then two losses as well. Hmm. Very peculiar, to be honest. Karmusha's last fight was against Shevchenko. She wouldn't get a title fight off just one win. How long is Shevchenko out for? 20 days only. Jeez. <laughs> She's ready to go now. The thing is, since Shevchenko basically welcomes like all comers, you know what I mean? Like, it really wouldn't hurt to just put her out there have her fight like Robertson, but would Robertson fighting for the title really make sense? I don't think so. With wins over with wins over Lexis Davis and Della Rosa, that's great. But like who did Della Rosa? Where's she at? Where is Della Rosa? Like what has she been up to? Beat Maya and Barella. Hmm. Lost to Andrea Lee, though. Lauren Murphy.
So I think the next fight to make for Robertson is probably Lauren Murphy. Is Lurie, is Murphy back soon? She's not. Robertson versus Chukagian. She's not back for four months. Barber. 27 days. That's such a big jump for Barber. I don't know if I really want to throw her. I know she's ha she has a win over Robertson, but she might be stronger like on paper than her in this game. Like I'm not 100% sure. I would want her to have a little bit more experience under her belt. When is Robertson back? 13 days. Hmm. I feel like Shevchenko versus Robertson would be okay. Either her or Lee. No. Robertson beating De La Rosa. Mm. I mean, yeah. Because what was, what was Calderwood coming off of? She was coming off a win to Andrea Lee. So, like... Yeah. Jillian Robertson it is. So Jillian Robertson's the next number one contender. Uh, Botello debuts at number 25. And at straw weight, Marina Rodriguez moves up to number 11. Jin Yu Frey is up to number 15. Uh, Herrick moves down. Everyone else moves up. Tisha Torres is back in the rankings. Okay. Let's see if there's anyone that we want to sign here. No. Alexander Schlemko. Number 25 middleweight in the world, apparently. Hmm. Low level national in Russia. go ahead and sign him especially considering he's a, a worldwide ranked you know middleweight 24 4 and 1 you say middleweights coming off two wins low level national in Russia Sounds good to me. Doesn't like that. What about 7k? Better offer. Hmm. What about straight up 8k? I won't be 100% upset if... Two offers you would consider. I won't be super upset if he doesn't... Oh, jeez. KSW really going after you that hard, huh? All right, now 9,000 is the most. Okay. But I'm not going to counter bid, so... If he wants to sign with KSW, that's fine. Uh, no, thank you... See anybody else? Ooh, who is this? You look old. You are forty years old. The KSW women's flyweight champion at forty years old, huh? Hey, beat Lauren Mueller. That would be a uh, Invicta signing for sure. I mean, twelve and one though. Eh, I'll let her go because she's not going to be around for a, for a while. Or she's not going to be around for that much longer, I should say. Featherweight 21-1. and one. 
How is he 21 and 1 when he has all those losses? Yeah, I'll hold off on him. Mid level regional. Nicholas Mousseau, no thank you. Lauren Mueller. Invicta signing. I saw her fight here in Arizona on the. I thought I did. Yeah, right there. The Poye versus Gaethje fight card. Wow, she really put in that many fights? Short amount of time? Yeah, she did. She lost three straight. <laughs> We'll bring you back on an Invicta contract. All right. Uh, Jin Su Son. No. See. No thanks. David Zawada, no thank you. Late dang. Bantam weights from China. You don't look very Chinese. Nah. Sometimes it's better to let these prospects, you know, collect wins on the local circuit just so they look good, you know. And that's about it. Let's go and take a look at our emails. Kovalkovich retired. Let's see if we can talk her out of it. And she doesn't want to. So Kovalkovich has retired and she's done. Is she good at anything? Eh, she's okay at analysis. Uh, does she want to open her own fight team, maybe? No. Oh, well. Best of luck to K Karolina Kovalkovic, but she has retired. Cody Garbrandt's on a five-loss, five-fight losing streak. Yikes. If he keeps losing, I'm going to have to cut him. But I will definitely resign. Ooh, hello. I will definitely resign him. Ben Rothwell. Mm. He's lost five out of his last six. Low level national though. Uh thirty nine years old, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, I'll keep him around. Thiago Santos. We're going to keep him anyways. Herbert Burns. Yeah, we'll keep him around. Ricky Simone. Need to make sure we keep him. Bobby Green. Is he coming off a loss? He is. Yeah. We're going to go. Ooh, low-level national, though. See, that's what sucks. Because he's low-level national. But he was on the prelims there, too, so. Yeah, you know what? Nah. Good luck, Bobby. Jin Frey need to get her re-signed. Bobby Green. He already has places that he can go, so that's perfectly fine. Ben Rothwell also has places that he can go. But we'll go ahead and re-sign him. And then Ronnie Sade. Alright, he's going to end up signing with us. Alright, that's going to do it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. The next time that I see you guys will be for UFC on ESPN. Rosenstroik versus Velasquez in the Caribbean. Which is kind of the 
hometown of Rosenstrike a little bit. And take a look at the main card there. There are the prelims. Glad that I could bring it here for you guys. I'm AZPlyo21. Be sure to leave a like. Be sure to leave a comment down below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and be sure to click on the little bell so you get notifications whenever I upload my videos. I will see you guys next time. Have a good one.